Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Hylia's Last Hero, and this is me dying over and over and over again while fighting Promised Consort Radon and Mikola. But we're not here to see that. We're here to see how I was finally able to defeat them. But before we get into that, do me a favor, and if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I will be covering the details of my build at the end of the video, oh, so stay tuned so you can yeah, get that information. Shots. Now, I don't consider yeah, myself me. to be great at Elden Ring, but I was finally able to defeat Radon and Mikola. I know there are those that will have something to say about my level or that I use summons, but I don't care. I still did it. Now, at this time, I was level 210 and my scatter tree blessings were maxed out at level 20. I summoned Pure Blood Knight Ansbach. I would have had more NPCs to summon had I not messed up their side quests. I used the Wondrous Physic Flask and I used my Mimic Tear. I also used Blood Fiend's Blood Armed for my weapon because it causes blood loss after two or three hits. You want to make sure you use your buffs before walking in because there is limited time to do anything once you walk through that mist. Also, two hand that weapon for more damage. Here we go. Now, as soon as you walk in, generally he's going to start with this diving AoE attack. I dive into that. Then I try to dive around left to keep him by the door so Ansbach will get his attention, but I kind of messed that up and I still took a hit. But I was still able to get away, summon my Mimic Tear, and heal up. Then I go in. He does this attack that it knocks me back. You still want to stay out of the way because he does that gravity magic. And I dive around left, and you can see that blood loss damage right there from those right trigger attacks, and my Mimic Tear doing the same thing. I generally try to stay close to him and just dive around to the left, hoping to get behind him or that he misses me while they get hits on him. And we get him into the second phase. At the beginning of second phase, he does this AOE attack. I like to just block it instead of trying to get away because if I try to get away, usually he zips towards me and gets me. Plus, it gives me a chance to get that jumping attack. Now, during this attack, He's invincible, so I just wait, and then I start hitting. There's that blood loss again. Dive out of the way of this. Usually you just run away, and if you time the jump right, those will miss you, but I messed that up, of course. Dive, get out of the way, watch out for those AoE attacks. And you want to make sure that you're healing as often as possible. You want to keep your health at full because he can do massive damage. You got to watch out for the aftershocks on his attacks. His attacks are the same pretty much as the first phase, except they have this uh, holy aftershock that comes after him. Uh, when he gets you like that, Mikola puts an enchantment on you, and if he gets you again, it's instant death. I just try to, again, avoid that those aftershocks it's definitely hard to get the timing of those dodges down watching out for the AoE I got that extra bleed damage here you just want to run away when he shoots into the sky and it's two dodges one for the impact and one for the aftershock and I just got lucky there I managed to get both usually I would never get both of them I'd get one or the other Again, try to get that bleed. We're close. Avoid that gravity magic. Now here I'm going to try to dive in past the gravity magic. I'm thinking I could get past it, but I couldn't. And then I'm trying to get close here to get the final hit, but my Mimic Tear actually gets it. Yes! And there it yes! is. Yes! Yes! Oh! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Whoo! Alright, now it's time for the build. First off, we have the Blood Fiend's Blood Arm at plus 25. 
It's actually called the Blood Fiend's Arm, but I added the Lion's Claw Ash of War to it and tuned it to Blood that changed its name and also gives it that Blood Loss buildup of 217. And it scales mostly with Arcane, but also a little bit on Strength and Dexterity. We have the Helm of Solitude, the Armor of Solitude, the Gauntlets of Solitude, and the Greaves of Solitude. Really, you want anything with good damage negation and poise, and as you can see, this armor set has that, but it is a little bit heavy, so that's why my endurance is set to 60. I do realize that I'm missing a talisman slot. Apparently, you could miss one if you don't talk to the finger lady uh, a second time after getting two remembrances before lighting the Erd tree on fire. But we have the Pearl Drake Talisman plus three that boosts non-physical damage negation, the Golden Braid to boost holy damage negation, the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which boosts physical damage negation, because you will be taking all those types of damage during this fight. And for the Wondrous Physic Flask, I use the Spiked Crack Tier and the Stone Barb Crack Tier, but I forgot to show that here in the footage. I'm at level 210, 50 Vigor, 11 Mind, 60 Endurance, 45 Strength, 44 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 10 Faith, and 60 Arcane for that weapon scaling on the Blood Fiend's Blood Arm. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it was able to help you out a little bit. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time... Keep on gaming.